The 1993 Ryder Cup returned to the Belfry in Sutton Coldfield, England for the third straight time. Tom Watson getting his first chance to captain the Americans, Bernard Gallagher returning as the European captain. A chilly, misty first morning of foursomes. Mark James approached to the fifth. He and Sam Torrance setting the tone for the morning. But Lanny Watkins, along with Corey Pavin, battled back. Watkins at six to square it. And they would go on to win four and three. The familiar figure of Payne Stewart, down three with Paul Azinger to the fourth. Oh my, but it would not be enough. Ian Woosnam partnering with Bernhard Langer to go four up at the fifth. And they would win seven and five to square the matches at one. Tom Kite now to the second. I think he knows this might be a good shot. He and the rookie Davis Love facing Seve Ballesteros and Jose Maria Oltabo. Seve now, the long putt to stay alive at 16. Brilliant. But his fortunes would run out one hole later. He and Olathaba would lose only their second match in 13 cup pairings together over the years. <laughs> Colin Montgomery now, up two along with Nick Faldo to the 14th, facing Raymond Floyd and Fred Couples. Faldo now with the birdie putt at 14 to go three up. And they would go on to win this match four and three. And after the first morning of the 30th Ryder Cup, it was all tied to a piece. Four ball play was the order of Friday afternoon at the Belfry in 1993. And in the first match, Peter Baker for birdie at 14 to go one up. He and Woosnam facing Jim Gallagher Jr. and Lee Jansen. Baker again now to the 18th. This would wind up being this young man's only Ryder Cup appearance, but he would win all three of his four matches. And the putt at 18 for the one up victory. And Europe led it three and two. Corey Pavement now, three up on Langer and Larry Lane along with Lanny Watkins, make that four up at number 13. They go on to win four and two and square the matches at three. Nick Faldo at 13 to square his match with Montgomery against Azinger and Couples. But Azinger at 16, Dead on. And they would go on to beat Faldo and Monty, one up. Seve and Olothabla again for the 14th straight session over the years. Seve driving the short par four 10th hole, facing Kite and Love. Olothabla finishes up at 15 as they win the match four and three, give Europe the lead again, four and three. Faldo now one down to the 17th to go all square. And it would stay that way because as gloomy as it looked on that shot, it would get worse. Fog halted play. The match finishes all square and Europe takes a one point lead to bed after day one. The sun would finally shine on the Belfry, day two, beginning with foursome competition, the alternate shot. Corey Pavin with Lanny Watkins, his second shot 
to number 10. The match goes all square with Montgomery and Faldo. Faldo now from just off the green at 14, and with that, he and Montgomery go on to win it three and two. Woosnam now to the 16th, paired with Longer, and one up against Couples and Azinger. As good as that shot was, Couples would match it. But it's alternate shot, remember? And Azinger can't convert. And they would lose that match two and one. The European lead now, six and a half to three and a half. All Raymond Floyd needed was a two putt at the 15th as he and Payne Stewart beat Peter Baker and Barry Lane three and two to slice the American deficit to just two points. Davis Love now for par to cut his and Tom Kite's deficit to just one against Seve and Olafabo. And now Seve still up one with the shot to 16. Olafabo had the putt to go two up. The Spaniards would go on to win it two and one, and the Europeans would take a three-point advantage going to the Saturday lunch break. The Americans were down seven and a half to four and a half going to the afternoon four ball competition at the Belfry in 1993 and quickly cut that by one with John Cook and Chip Beck's win over Faldo and Montgomery. Now, Corey Pavin to number five. Watch closely because it did disappeared in a hurry. He and Jim Gallagher Jr. beat Mark James and Costantino Rocca five and four and the European lead is just one. The hottest putter on the grounds might have belonged to young Peter Baker though, that for birdie at five and this at number six. And this for birdie at eight. And this at number nine. And one more at number 10. The young British player continued his scintillating play as he and Ian Woosnam trounced Zenger and Couple six and five to extend the European lead again to two points. Payne Stewart now, the long birdie putt at 15. He and the oldest competitor in Ryder Cup history, 51-year-old Ray Floyd, facing a new team, Olathebel this time with Joaquin Hagman. Stewart and Floyd win it two and one. And the European lead is just eight and a half to seven and a half after the second day at the Belfry. Day three at the 30th Ryder Cup at the Belfry, singles competition and a half point right out of the box for both teams. Sam Torrance had to withdraw due to injury early. Peter Baker continued his brilliant putting clinic. This at 18 to clinch a two up victory over Corey Pavin. Tom Kite now for birdie at 11. This to go four up in his eventual five and three victory over Bernhard Longer. Payne Stewart out of the bunker at 16. Already two up in his match with Mark James. He makes the short putt to close out the future European captain, three and two. Europe's lead is now 11 and a half to 10 and a half. Raymond Floyd to the par 3 14th. Quick, take the stick out. Take the stick out. Would have been an ace, but a birdie puts him one up over Olathebel. Well, maybe you don't have to take the stick out. This is Nick Faldo, same hole, same club. A 
little bit better results. As he goes one up over Paul Azinger. Longer must make to continue his match with Tom Kite. Kite wins it, five and three. Matches are now tied at 12 and a half. Davis Love now with the short putt to close out Costantino Rocca. One up. And now the Americans had the cup within their sights once again. Leaving it appropriately to the oldest of them all, Raymond Floyd. His third birdie putt on the back nine, clinching the Ryder Cup for the Americans as they managed to retain the cup for the first time in a decade. 